What a performance. What a game. Chelsea are finally back to winning ways, and I feel like there's a newfound positivity around the club at the moment. This is partly down to the resurgence of the man who features in the title and thumbnail, a superstar performance from one Raheem Sterling, but what else was going on in this game, and why did we win? Let's find out. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from MonoCFC and this is my post-match tactical breakdown for Chelsea vs Luton Town. This was our third game of the Premier League season, which saw Chelsea take on newly promoted Luton Town at Stamford Bridge in a game that ended in a rather impressive 3-0 to our Chelsea Blues. But what was impressive about it? Let's dive in, shall we? I'm going to start off by talking about the first half, which admittedly wasn't as good as it could have been. I think one player's position in particular wasn't proving very fruitful, and in the second half we rectified this and started to really take a hold of the game. That's not to say we didn't win the half, because we did, going into the break 1-0, but before we talk about that goal, let's look at how we set up in that first half. Chelsea continued to use this 4-3-3 system, with Colwell playing as a left back, and Chilwell playing higher up as a left winger. Due to the injuries to Nkunku and Kani Chukwemeka, as I predicted in my match preview, Enzo was pushed up higher into that role. Luton were playing this 5-3-2, and to their credit, they did actually try and get at us in this game, pressing high up when they had the opportunity, mainly when Chelsea were trying to play out from the back. For the most part though, they sat back almost in a 5-4-1, and allowed us to have possession with Carlton Morris being left up top, similarly to what we saw from West Ham with Antonio. Their game plan was probably inspired by that impressive West Ham performance, and they wanted to try and replicate its success. Our 4-3-3 operated in two totally different ways in each of the two halves. In the first half we played very much in a 3-4-3, or you could even say a 3-2-5 in possession, with Gusto pushing up very high, the centre back shifting across, Chilwell coming out wide, and Enzo going up top in that left forward position. He was sometimes the highest player up the pitch, which was odd to see, and was even one of the players that we left up top when we were playing out from the back in the first half. Getting Enzo higher up the pitch is something I want to see, but I did feel as if this was a little extreme. Obviously, both sides of the pitch would interchange, with Chilwell swapping with Enzo sometimes, and Sterling often finding himself out wide here too. But for the majority of the first half, Enzo was directly filling in for Chukwemeka, and playing that position as it would normally be played. Enzo was really important in this game too, because by now we've seen that our way of creating chances comes from these direct balls up to our forwards, be that Jackson as the main striker holding up the ball, or Sterling and now Enzo in the left and right forward positions who will then pop it into Jackson or an overlapping fullback. Even Gallagher will sometimes come higher into this space in order to receive the ball through the lines. We saw this happen early on in the half, with Enzo receiving a direct pass from Silva, laying it off for Jackson, allowing him to collect the ball without his back to goal, and dribble up the pitch for an opportunity. But what Enzo's position really did for us was navigate the lack of space that Luton's five of the back system creates. When he picks up the ball on this left hand side, the entire Luton team shifts over to that side in order to stay narrow and compact. They back themselves to be able to defend crosses with all the height the team has, so they fill the middle of the pitch with players and basically challenge the opposition to try and beat them from the wide areas instead. But what this does is leave one of our wide players free, and if we can get the ball out to that space quickly before the wing back can get there and cover the space, it creates danger for Luton. And we saw this exact thing happen early on with Sterling's goal. This is an incredible piece of individual brilliance, so 90% of this goal is all Raheem Sterling, but the remaining 10% comes from Enzo picking up the ball, the ball getting shifted to the right hand side quickly, and Sterling now being given the time and space to realise that he can go on an aggressive run. It's worth noting that Sterling has said that Pochettino has allowed him to play with his back to goal less often, like he was under previous managers, so he can pick up the ball in these areas and go for these types of exciting dribbles. The first half played out mostly the same for the majority of the 45 minutes, Chelsea trying to find a way past a solid Luton bastion and chipping their armour with one goal, but not able to totally break it with more. This certainly changed in the second half, but before we talk about that, Real quick, if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Cheers. Alright, so what happened in the second half and why were we much more successful? Well, once again it was down to the way that we played this 4-3-3, and specifically how we utilised Enzo Fernandez. 
Instead of playing that pseudo 3 at the back formation, we stayed relatively strictly in a 4-3-3, with Malogusto playing a little further back, Chilwell staying high in left wing, and Enzo dropping deeper into the midfield instead of in the left half space. We decided to play out from the back a little bit more, with Moises Caicedo dropping between the two centre backs a lot, similar to how Jorginho used to do when he played for the Blues. The instant the half began we could see this adaptation, with not only Caicedo dropping deep, but Levi Colwell operating more as a left back than a left centre back and even getting up the pitch on the overlap a few minutes in. What Enzo dropping deeper allowed us to do was pick out the forward runners easier, as he could be the one to pick up the ball deeper here on this left channel and get his head up and spray passes, rather than being one of the runners himself. Joel was more tasked as being the runner on that side instead, with the aforementioned Levi Colwell able to lock down the left side defensively. We saw this in operation a few times early on in the half, one opportunity that Chiuel unfortunately forgot his lines and tried to square the ball to Sterling instead of shoot, and another where Enzo played in Jackson for a chance to shoot at the near post. Enzo himself got an opportunity at that same post from a delicious cross from Raheem Sterling, all starting from Enzo winning the ball from that left centre mid position. Unfortunately the angle was too tight for the Argentinian and he lashed his strike into the left post. We created a lot more clear cut opportunities from those types of situations, us getting the ball to Enzo in the middle then hitting the runners, or Jackson who was once again phenomenal at holding up the ball in this game. We had another chance from Sterling go begging from one of these long passes through the centre up to Jackson, who played in the Englishman perfectly, but unfortunately his touch let him down and his shot at the end of the move wasn't great either. Funnily enough, our second goal once again didn't come from anything particularly tactical, just another strong run from Sterling, the ball bounces out to Caicedo who slots in Malogusto in space, who picked out a peach of a cutback to find Sterling for his second goal of the game, and Gusto's second assist. Although this doesn't show off the tactical nuance of the second half, it does show off something that I've spoken about a lot in recent times, the difference between playing high crosses against playing low ones. In the first half, a lot of the balls from Gusto and Chilwell came in high and never really found their target. As I've mentioned in my last few match previews, I think we'd be much better playing these low or cutting the ball back, as our forwards aren't the tallest and this provides us more opportunities for our team. In the second half we switched this up and started playing all of our crosses low, such as the previously mentioned chance for Enzo and this goal from Sterling. Our third goal also came from a low cross, which I'll talk about in a moment. But before that, I want to highlight something else from this goal that I think is really important, what happens after we score it. Sterling scores the goal, but almost every player runs over to Malogusto to congratulate him for the excellent assist. We see this a lot in Germany, where they appreciate the aspect of team play much more than a lot of English teams do, and it's excellent to see. A while ago, way back when, in my first ever video of my return to this channel, I made a video where I discussed five things I thought Poch needed to bring to this team, and I said this. Mauricio Pochettino needs to rectify this issue, unite the players together, make them fight for one another, and make them fight for the badge. They need to be taught to value and celebrate assists, not just goals, team achievements over personal stats, and know that a group of great individuals will always lose to a good collective. Speaking of things that are refreshing and I want to keep happening, let's talk about Nico Jackson's first ever goal for Chelsea. Once again, this is down to some individual brilliance, but this time brilliance within the tactics. It all starts from one of those direct passes from the back into the feet of Enzo from Thiago Silva, then with some of the silkiest touches, Enzo takes the ball down, then volleys a pass over the top to Raheem Sterling, who plays the ball low into the path of Jackson for a tap-in. This not only highlights why Enzo in these deeper positions is so important, but is a prime example of why we should hit these low balls, because Sterling doesn't play this pass perfectly, but it hits the defender's shin and deflects perfectly into Jackson's path. The ball doesn't reach Jackson if he puts it in the air. These are the types of opportunities I spoke about earlier. Low balls create mistakes, which in turn creates chances to score. Let's hope that this is the first of many for the Senegalese, and Chelsea can start scoring for fun in the near future. And what does the future hold? Well, we move on to a cup tie against our close London neighbours AFC Wimbledon, which will be a good test for some of the youngsters if Pochettino decides to rotate them into the side for this one. The preview for that will be out on Wednesday before the game, so stay tuned for that. And finally, before the end of the video, it's time for the question of the day. As always, I'm going to highlight some of the comments from the last video, so here are a few responses to the last question of the day. Thanks guys for your continued support as ever. 
If you want your comment to be featured in the next video, leave your answer to this video's question of the day below with QOTD at the start. So for this week's question of the day, we'll go for an interesting one. After this good performance, do you want Posh to stick with this system or not, and why? But that was just my tactical breakdown for this week. Thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this match in the comment section below. And if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me or check out some of the other videos on the channel on screen right now. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on, you blues.